Hey everybody, it's your friend ECW fan and the collector, and I'm coming to you with another pawn shop pickups and some flea market stuff I picked up. If you saw the video back about three or four weeks ago, I shot a video, maybe longer. It was called the Solo Missions, where I went out to a couple flea markets. It was the first of the year, so I'm gonna go ahead and show some of the stuff off I got there. But it's a pawn shop pickups volume because a lot of this I picked up from the pawn shop. The only one cheap thrills thing that I made a good trade on. And I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the, the flea market stuff first. Now, got a humorous story there. I went to one of these flea markets and I'm not really proud of myself for doing this. But I was looking around and um, I went up to this one booth and... This lady was like holding all these games in her hand and she's like talking and I could tell her boyfriend or husband or somebody must have been a reseller and they're going over prices, you know. And that's one thing that irks me at times is people, look, a lot of us like to collect. If you're going there just to get value and resale and like, that's, I had this already plotted out. Don't get there and stand by the booth and just look around just holding and sitting there and carry this conversation on about. So I looked down there's a game that you know she hasn't picked up and it was uh it, oh crap i'm crazy it was actually this it was deadliest catch and i i could tell she wasn't happy with my possibly picking it up but i, I was like well you 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 had games in your hand you know but you've obviously looked past this one so i went ahead and picked it up and i, I needed it for my collection my playstation 3 collection I'm sorry. That's just me. I'm sorry. I had to get it. I mean, it. I can tell. And I, I walk after I bought from that booth. I bought a couple things else, and I walked off to a different direction because I didn't want this lady to think, "Oh man, I'm following her around." You know, I walked off in a different direction, and I picked up a a, a big DVD set that I traded into toward what you'll see later, and a couple other movies I picked up from that booth, and I used as trade bait. Anyhow, I met this old lady there, and she was really nice. And you know the one that, if you saw the clip, we were sitting there joking around, and she said, hey, just go ahead and film me. And anytime now, more or less, I don't do wide camera shots. I try to keep the fam camera focused on me and Eddie and Chris and CJ and my cousin and Jay. You know, anybody that's with us that knows me. And I don't do wide camera shots anymore. So I come back and say, okay, if you're quite okay with it, and we sit there and chat it, and she advertised her sale for the next week, and really friendly. She cut me a deal on these games. I got the cases themselves, man. The, case, the games are in great shape. It's just these cases look like they've been through, they've been through the war. I'm going to have to get some new cases. There's uh, Vancouver 2010 Olympics. I got John Daly's Pro Star Golf. And the guy there was really nice. That one guy that was there, me and him chatted. I picked up, I went back to that booth where I got the, and I saw this jaw set. And I was like, man, nobody's, I said, I didn't even see that the first time. Because I guess I was thinking about what this woman, you know, because I could tell she gave me a look. And I was like, trying to be cool, you know, and I was joking around with that lady. So I come back and I bought this jaw set. And it's got a book with it. It's got a nice collector's book. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's got this nice collector's book. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that off of her. Get out of the water. <laughs> Me and her joked about that. Um, while I was there at that old, old lady's booth when I got the games, she gave me this one for uh, a dollar. Is David Spade, Dickie Roberts, former child star. I like I like this movie, David Spade. Now this one I found at the first flea market and it shocked me because I've I've never seen this movie on DVD and it's one that I've really wanted for a long while and I used to watch it in the early 90s. It's David Keith as Elvis. It's called Heartbreak Hotel and it's like an alternate universe where Elvis is, he's, 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 you know, he's torn but he changes his life around because he meets this young boy and he tells at the end scene if you look at it on YouTube he's a he reminded me of myself. He said, I was a punk kid, didn't, he, said, he made me feel like Elsie. And it's like he was changing his life. And 
Charlie Shalatter's in it. It's really a nice comedy. Now, this guy had these two movies, and he said, hey, go ahead and take them. He said, I need to get rid of them. Uh, he's, he's, he's sold them to me for a dollar. <laughs> Just these two movies, and it was really nice. You know, I, I wanted Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the first movie. And I noticed a weird thing about these Harry Potter films, this first one. Every time I went to get this at a pawn shop or a flea market, the disc was in crap shape. I mean, the first disc, uh, they must have played it a million times. Whoever whoever owns it must have played it a million times. Harry Potter must be beloved. I mean, <laughs> I, I know the series is still going. Uh, the, the first disc, I don't know what it is. Every time I pull it out, except this time. This time the disc was in good shape. <laughs> and I went ahead and picked it up. And this was in good shape. This was a three disc special, uh, 2012 with John uh, John Cusack. And the scene in this is just iconic for Cusack going having a freaking mental breakdown. He is going insane <laughs> when he pulls up to pick up his family. As the, the world is, you know, he's getting the effing car. Uh, I like Don Cusack, but I, I guess they told him, they said, John, we need you to act. We need you to go Nick Cage on this. And he said, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> now, the lady there had a PlayStation 3 controller. And this looks like this is pot leaves on this controller. I, I, I just picked it up because I like the design. And that's all the flea market. That's all the flea market from a couple of weeks ago. The rest of this is pawn shop, except the the last one, which I'm very happy to show. You, which so I'm gonna go ahead and start this off. These pawn shop pickups is some of my favorites that I found. I finally found a copy of Tom Hanks' The Burbs. The Burbs, and I've I've had two chances to get this movie, and both times the disc was in terrible shape. Except this time I opened it up, and the disc was in perfect shape. Now, this is weird. Uh, the only reason I'm filming this volume now is I'm going to trade this eventually. But um, I filmed, I got this about a week and a half before I got with Eddie and we went to Penn Springs and where I found the Naked Gun collection set. I've got the Naked Gun, the first one, which will be traded off because I've got the collection set there. I found Cowboy, Cowboy Bebop 2 with, at the pawn shop and I've got first session so now I've got second session so this is kind of unique you know I've got two, the two sessions DVD and I, I looked online there's like four more of these so I might if I look about it I might do it I don't know I got Princess Mononoke at the pawn shop I have no clue how good this movie is it it looks interesting you know I like some good anime I like to find these anime classics so yeah, I went ahead and picked it up. And that's all the animation. <laughs> now we're going to go to some movies. And I got the complete trilogy at one pawn shop. And this is fantastic. I can't believe I got this for... And look at the original price sticker on that. that is, <laughs> this is the complete collection trilogy of Back to the Future. Oh, Back to the Future. Yeah. All three films. Uh, these are in great shape. Now, this is one that has a unique story. A few weeks ago, I went to uh, Goodwill, and the lady helped me get, you know, she said, I picked up the Cannonball Run. And the first one was, the, the film was not in good shape. Cannonball Run, I said, I'm, I, said I, don't, I don't think I can use this one. I said, because the disc is in too bad a shape. So she gave me a discount on it. And she said, hopefully it works for you. Yeah. And I thank her for doing that. She went, gave me a discount, knocked so much off of it instead of the regular price. Because here it's a dollar fifty, so she knocked it down to about a dollar. So I took it to Cheap Thrills and he said, he said, there's a chance. He said it might not work, it might. Well, I got 30 minutes in and it started messing up. It just it was just too far gone. So I wrote it off. I said, man, I'm gonna have to order the cannonball around. I'm gonna check with Larry one day. Well, I found the Cannonball Run at the same pawn shop I found Back to the Future. True story. And this one I just watched. And it's classic. 
It's classic. I just need to find Cannonball Run 2 and 3, which is easier said than done. Because <laughs> it's, it's just crazy. At a pawn shop, I found Zombieland, which I decided to go ahead and pick up put it in my Blu-ray collection. Because the first one is a classic. The first one is a huge classic. Um, I think the biggest problem with Zombieland Double Tap was they waited too long. It was too many years have passed. If they had just done it a couple years after this one, it would have been good. But I think they waited a decade, and it was just, it was just too long. But it's a nice one for the Blu-ray collection, the first one. Now, this one, I am so happy to get. I never imagined this would be in a pawn shop. If you're, and I'll admit, I like some British comedies. I'm a big British comedy fan. Monty Python, uh, Keeping Up Appearances, maybe some a couple of episodes of Last of the Summer Wine for the, the adventures those old folks get into. And one of them I liked is Faulty Towers. And I saw this. I said, please let the discs be in good shape. Let the discs be in good shape. And I looked at them. I was like, they're in great shape. And I was like, the complete series. They only did 12 episodes of Faulty Towers. But it's considered one of the greatest British sitcoms ever made. Um, the series is funny as hell. Basil Faulty runs his bed and breakfast. And he is not a good guy at times. Uh, there's stuff in here that you, you know, so it's pretty edgy now. John Cleese is great. Now we're going to go from John Cleese to a 90s comedy that I decided to get because I kept seeing ads. I kept seeing it show up on YouTube, weirdly in my movie recommendations, and I was like, I need to get this. And, um, it's trial and error. It's, it's Michael Richards and Jeff Daniels, and uh, it's just insanely silly as a comedy about a guy posing as a lawyer. And uh, I, I'll tell you what, back in the day, they said that uh, Charlie's, I mean, she just showed up in Doctor Strange too, Charlie Saron, but whew, gosh, man, look at that, man. I mean, in this movie, she, she is smoking. I mean, she's wearing short, short Daisy Dukes, and I can see why Jeff Daniels' character was all about, you know, he, he became entranced with her. She's a baby. Now, at the pawn shop, like I said, I was like, I just want to get the first Harry Potter. So something told me, like, if you see the second one and the discs are in great shape, maybe you should pick it up too. And I was like, and, I was, I was, and a couple times I saw that some of these, it wasn't in good shape. So I picked this one up, and I saw that the disc was in good shape, and I said, I'm going to go ahead and get the second one. I mean, both movies, uh, what the heck. Uh, we'll see what happens, you know. I got the Lego games, and I made a joke that it's weird that Harry, the character of Harry Potter, keeps ending up in this bathroom. And somebody's like, that's a key pivotal part of one of the movies. I was like, hold on, this whole bathroom deal because of a big part? <laughs> it's like... He's like, have you never seen the movies? I was like, nope. And he's like, man. And I don't know what's going on with Harry Potter's creator, so don't ask me. I, like I said, I've never seen the movies. I just played the Lego games. I love the Lego games. And I just found that whole part funny as hell about him going to the bathroom repeatedly in this one level. Now, I picked this one up, and... Uh, it's, it's not a really widely known Stallone film. In fact, when I show this and if Eddie's watching, Eddie will be like, I didn't know he made that. And I was like, well, there's like two or three films in the early 2000s Stallone made. And his career had really hit a, a low point. And one of these is called I See You, where he's a detective hunting a serial killer. And Stallone, you know, like I said, his career had hit a low point and it was not really doing good. There's another one I'm looking for because, like I said, I like to find these that you don't really expect to learn to do. Another 80s classic I found for a dollar, and I finally found this one after I saw this in Goodwill and the disc was in just so, it was in worse shape than Caddy, uh, Cannonball Run. And I, did, I just put it back because I was like, I don't really need it that bad. 
to try to take the risk on, but it's Adventures in Babysitting, and this one was at the pawn shop, and I've always heard this was a good movie. The lady, the one little girl dresses up with Thor, the Thor helmet. I thought that's kind of cool. Now, Eddie will like these two, and I looked all around, dude. I looked around for the third part of this trilogy set, and the, 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 I didn't realize the case was missing right there bad, but anyhow, I found subspecies, sub, uh, subspecies, the epic collection. And uh, there's actually, I, I think there's three movies. Well, I only found two. I found subspecies one and two. Eddie could tell me, is there a third one, Eddie? You could tell me, buddy, out there. I mean, there, there could be a third one. I ain't looked into it yet. But yeah, this was kind of cool. And finally, I found this one just today. I was out looking around, and uh, I rolled up on a uh, pawn shop, and I was like, there's one cartoon I've always wanted, and I don't know what it is. It's uh, basically, uh, it, it's The Hobbit, the classic late 70s, early 80s, Warner Brothers Hobbit movie. And the cartoon is so graphic and adult, it, it would, it, you can't let little kids watch it. There's no way my niece could watch it. It would haunt her. You know, but here it is. It's the Hobbit. And the lady cleaned the disc. She said, I, I went ahead and I was like, I said, I'm going to take a shot at it. You know, I really want this. You know, I've been looking for this one. Like Caddy, uh, like Cannonball. We'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and show off these games I got at a pawn shop. And these were nice. These were nice. I picked up. From that shop where the guy knows me and he just he just sold me these for basically nothing Ben Diesel wheel man for the PlayStation 3 I got MX versus ATF alive yeah. Yeah, for the PlayStation 3 collection I got Assassin's Creed Origins and I've got uh, the seven deadly sins and I've heard this was a pretty good RPG, so I went ahead and picked it up. I know Eddie gets after me. He's like, man, you, he said, you need to get that game. Is this that some of the crappy RPGs you get? I was like, well, I like my RPGs. I like, I like my role-playing games, like Final Fantasy. I'm going to get you into it, Eddie. <laughs> Still talking about Final Fantasy now. That's, 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 that's my jam. <laughs> but yeah, these were some nice ones. And finally, I made a trade. I traded a bunch of movies cheap thrills and uh they ordered me this movie because i've been i was a big fan of this movie back in the early 90s it's not widely known the film is one that if i told you about it you would not believe that it actually exists but it's on youtube pull up the clips um uh, john turturro when he was really starting out done a movie with the uh zucker brothers it was called brain donors and Brain Donors is pretty much a homage to the Marx Brothers films. It even has the opera. Uh, I love the ballet. And uh, it's it's just so insanely fun. It's, and the movie just didn't do good. The movie just it came out and was forgot about. And I used to see it on HBO and stations, and I was like, man, why, did, why didn't this movie do better? Why did this movie not do as good as it should have? And it's a shame that we never we never got more sequels. It's a shame, because like I said, the movie just come out, and they just basically low-released it. And just and from reading, I think it come, they filmed it like a year or two before, and they basically, the studio just got rid of it. They... I, I think they just didn't know what to do with this film. And it's it's a classic to me. And I'm very happy that Cheat Thrills was able to get this and I was able to clear this movie. And I was like, yeah, this is one that I was very, you know, I was very happy that he was able to order. I was like, man, I hope they can get Brain Donors. And he's like, you're in luck. He's like, I can order that. I was like, oh, really? He's like, yep, just did DVD. You don't have it in Blu ray. I was like, crap, that sucks. <laughs> Because I would love to have in Blu-ray, but I'll take it in DVD. But that's it. That's my pawn shop pickups for today with some 
flea market stuff and a little cheap thrills. I hope you enjoyed this haul. And until next time, I'm going to go watch some brain donors. <laughs>